Hello and welcome to Courageous Doctors, the new show for you and your doctor. On this show, we'll discuss Obamacare updates, other interesting health news and health and safety tips. Now let's begin. The Washington Post reports that the IRS is no longer enforcing the ACA, the Accountable Care Act, individual mandate. In other words, they're not going to withhold your tax funds if you don't pay, uh, if you don't buy insurance. The Washington Post also says that Congress and Trump are now trying to get through a replacement health care act, which I'm sure most of you have already heard of. This will use tax based credits that's based on age and not on income, as Obamacare was, so that you can buy insurance or even use health savings accounts with the tax deductions you save. Also, by lowering premiums through competition across state lines, this will help to lower the cost by using high risk pools for the chronically ill. Instead of just saying everybody's covered with every plan, they'll have high risk pools, which is what we used to do before Obamacare. And states will be giving grant money for this uh, from a federal fund. Um, Trump also addressed uh, to Congress uh, that he wants to keep the pre-existing conditions that we now have to safeguard that. That was the best part of Obamacare, as well as allowing children to stay on the parents' plan up to age 26. He did not, however, mention any caps, that Obamacare has caps on how much you can pay, not only for uh, total out-of-pocket for medicine, but uh, there's no cap uh, on what you can pay, but also there's no caps on what your illness might cost. None of that was mentioned now, so that has to be worked out. Now, the uh, Star-Ledger talked about the Medicaid expansion continuing until the year 2020. So this was a big fear that people on Medicaid would not be, uh, would be kicked off or like say you had cancer or something and you needed uh, Medicaid to pay for all your treatments. Uh, the, sec the Secretary of Health, uh, Dr. Tom Price, said that's not going to happen. Uh, we will try to continue the Medicaid expansion, which is part of this new reconciliation bill going through. Remember, the bill's going through in three phases. The reconciliation phase um, is going to try to keep as much of Obamacare as it can and gradually phase it out. And then the competition between states and the other things are going to come in uh, towards the end of the year. It's a three-phase vote-in bill. Uh, so that People on Medicaid, Dr. Price said in a recent interview on CNN with Wolf Blitzer and Dana Bash at a town hall meeting, you, you really shouldn't worry. People in the audience asked about being kicked off if they have cancer and they're on Medicaid or they're pregnant. And he said, if you're on Medicaid, don't worry about it. He goes, nothing, that's all going to be phased out slowly. Nobody should get hurt. Um, now, the, uh, the one thing that a lot of people disagreed with, but Tom Price, uh, Dr. Price tried to explain, is that if you have a lapse in coverage, uh, you will be penalized by re-signing up for insurance up to 130% more of your premium. Dr. Price explained you have the same penalty if you uh, didn't sign up for Medicare and that the insurance company just needs to charge you a little more for just that one year, and after that, you're back to the premium for everybody else, no matter you know, what your illness is. However, this remains to be seen. I'll talk a little more about this in a minute, but we need to see, uh, without everybody being covered for everything like we are now under Obamacare, uh, and people being allowed to select insurances that just meet their needs, as Dr. Price talked about, we're going to have to really see um, exactly what individuals' premiums will be. For example, we know that if you're older, it's going to cost more. And until people over, say, 50 or 60, until they get on Medicare, their premiums are going to go up. And a lot of seniors uh, uh, who are not yet under Medicare or, or you know, upper middle class, uh, upper middle aged people are upset about this. But again, this all has to be worked out through Congress, and we're not sure what the final bill is going to look like. Um, there will be decreased funding to Planned Parenthood, but Dr. Price also reassured um, at this town hall meeting <clears throat> that there are plenty of other community clinics that are going to get federal funding and people should not be worried uh, about losing money in Planned Parenthood. Again, we'll have to see what happens there. Now, um, Vox Hill uh, News uh, actually broke down what the tax credits are going to be. Remember, it's based on age and not income. Before, you had to be poor 
to get help in buying insurance. Now it's going to be age because the premiums are going to be more for older people. Uh, under Obamacare, I think Dr. Price said you were allowed the insurance could charge you only three times the premium if you're older. Now they can charge you even more, but you'll also get a higher tax credit. So look at your screen, and these are the tax credits. $2,000 uh, coming back to you if you're under 30, $2,500 if you're under 40, $3,000 under 50, $3,500 under 60, and $4,000 if you're over 60. So you have $4,000 to go to pay for a higher premium. Now let me just uh, uh, talk just for two minutes about where I think we're going with this. Obviously, President Obama himself said in an interview with Fox News uh, towards the end of his, um, his term, <clears throat> he said, if I could have thrown more money into Obamacare, it would have worked better. And this was the whole point. Do we want to become a Bernie Sanders-like European system where we're all on Medicare? That would be fine with me. To be honest with you, as a, uh, I, I would love to have the ease of just being paid by the government for every patient. I'd probably make more of my office as general pediatrician under Medicare. I don't even make what Medicare pays. I'm managed care and uh, it's really hard. In fact, personally for me as a small time pediatrician, uh, small practice uh, pediatrician, um, one third of my funds were cut the last two years, forcing me to, to merge and a lot of small practices are going out of business. Hopefully I'll still be here. <clears throat> but. Um, because uh, they said they didn't have the money with Obamacare to pay us anymore. It was just too expensive. So Obamacare was failing, insurance companies are pulling out, so we needed to do something. But in terms of seeing where we're going to go and if it's going to be better, like I alluded to before, we have to see how the plan works out in Congress. Uh, will, we're sort of going back to what we had before. Will competition between insurance companies keep the premiums from raising too fast, rising too fast? <coughs> Excuse me. Will we be able to afford all the chronically ill patients? Will older people be able to pay? Will younger people sign on? This we're all going to have to see. So let me uh, just tell, just mention two other quick points before continuing with the news show. There's two points that I, I hear all the time and I think you as the consumer need to realize what's going on. President Obama uh, was not uh, forthright in being honest, uh, although I, I love him, I think he's a great president, but he said that the computer was going to make me a better doctor. You have to realize what's really going on. That's the first thing. What do I mean by that? There's a double-edged sword to the computer. Computers will only allow, th through the insurance company, what they consider evidence-based practice. If you don't fall in those parameters, you can't get the tests or or treatment or whatever you might need for yourself. And, and so that's a double-edged sword. And, and, and that's the first and most important thing I want to mention. Uh, the second was evidence-based medicine, but I'll talk about them both at the same time. So what's good about computers is that maybe we want order more than we have to, say, just if we're afraid of being sued and we want to order more tests more than we have to. Obama was probably right about that. <clears throat> Although I think he went overboard about that. I don't think that's a big part. I, I, I don't think that com needing the computers to do that is necessarily the way to go because computers can hurt you also. I'm not against computers, but to not let computers make the decisions for me. So the double-edged sword, one, maybe it helps that we don't order too many tests. Two, it stops us from giving you what you need. In other words, wouldn't you rather have me as your doctor pick up a phone like I've done for 30 years call another doctor I need help with and say, I've got Mr. Jones on the phone. He has this problem. What test should I order? Do you need to see him? And have a personal conversation. Do you think a computer can do that? Let's get real. Okay, so you're taking away, you're making decisions based on a computer without letting me call a doctor and just make those decisions for you. And the insurance company, who's the one paying, is saying, no, we have to go by the computer. So President Obama led you astray there. And that's probably the, uh, the main thing I have to say about that. Let's talk about what is this evidence-based medicine that's on the computer. I'll be very brief and we'll get on. Like any other research, uh, you have a certain population of people. Now, these are very bright researchers, but they only have what test subjects they're working with. Who's to say you are like the people being tested? Not, and in fact, the results that come out of this research don't necessarily include all the people in the research because they take an average of what they think is going to happen 
and it may not even include all the people in the research, and you may not even fit there. Don't you want me as your doctor to say, evidence base is only a guideline, it gives me an idea if I'm in the right ballpark, and then tailor the treatments and medications and services and benefits that you need for yourself? So give me a break, give me a chance, let me treat my patients, let me call the insurance companies and deal with it, and time's gonna tell, this was the concluding point I wanted to make, Let's see if this new health care that Dr. Price wants to put through and a, and a bunch of really smart doctors from the South that helped put this together and that Speaker Ryan's trying to get through in these three phases in the House. Let's see if it ends up letting me take better care of you. I'll end with that and let's get on with the rest of the news. Okay, the Star-Ledger uh, mentions that Governor Christie says that Medicaid will be funded uh, pretty good under these block grants to the state. Again. We're not just getting Obamacare money up front like we did, and we're not just getting handouts for Medicaid. We're now going back to what we had before Obamacare. States are given money and this, and for Medicaid, and the states have to use it the best they can. I have a lot of managed Medicaid, and the uh, state controls how the money is being spent through these plans. And let's hope that we get enough money to take care of the patients. Right now, uh, the ledger says that Medicaid insures 813,400 people out of 1.9 million total minors. It has, I'm sorry, it has over 800,000 children out of almost 2 million children in the state, and it pays for 42% of all the births. <clears throat> Medicaid uh, uses one-fifth of New Jersey's state budget. Wow, one-fifth. And it insures one-fifth of New Jersey's residents. Interesting numbers. And Christie uh, recently cut a deal, you may have heard, at his State of the State with the Blues to fund his addiction and rehab and prevention program. The uh, ledger goes on to say that the governor um, recently signed a new law limiting doctors to only five days prescription for painkillers, you know, the, the big problem. So if you come to me, I can only give you five days worth of a painkiller. Uh, it's probably better that you go to a pain management center or to a specialist dealing in pain but uh, I myself can only give out five days worth, at least on the initial visit. Um, just to mention that Seema Verma will head the uh, Center for uh, Medicare, Center for Medicaid and Medicare, uh, and you probably should know who she is. That's the person, the director in charge of how government funds are spent on health care. She is from Vice President Pence's state in Indiana, and she oversaw Healthy Indiana Insurance Reform where, Gov where Governor Pence at that time, now Vice President, had health savings act accounts, high deductible but cheaper premiums. High deductible is kind of scary. It means you essentially have no insurance because until you meet the deductible, it won't pay, but it was probably a cheaper premium. And work activity requirement for Medicaid, I'm not sure what that means. If you can't be on Medicaid unless you have a job, I don't know. But anyway, this woman who was in charge of the governor's program for Indiana's health insurance, is now running it for the country, for the Medicare and Medicaid. The New York Times, uh, as we mentioned, Dr. Tom Price, the Health and Human Service Secretary, <clears throat> he helped author the new insurance bill in Congress, and he was the former chair of the House Budget Committee. Very smart man. Washington Post uh, just mentions that the Obamacare enrollment is down by half a million. It's going to keep going down. It's going out. <clears throat> Aetna says that the... Uh, the Aetna CEO says that Obamacare is in a death spiral because all the plans are dropping out. We mentioned that. The New York Times says that the Aetna Humana merger was blocked by a United States district uh, judge. We had been following that before, but apparently that merger is not going to go through. Bloomberg News says that the pharmaceutical industry wants a pay-for-performance agreement in order to try to keep down drug prices. And an appeals court in Florida, and this is very interesting, struck down a law that would prevent me as a pediatrician from asking about any firearms at home, which is a stupid law. I should be able to ask anything I want between me and the patient. Again, government getting in the way. But Hi, I'm Ingrid Burke. And I'm Gina Unger. Gina has known Dr. Barry in a professional and personal capacity for many years and we are thrilled to be in his building. We are psychotherapists and we offer mental health counseling for ages 12 and up. We do individual, couples, and family counseling. We're also excited to say that we have groups that we have for teenage boys and girls, 
for social skills, anger management, and self-esteem building. If you need to reach us, check us out at lifeworksnj.com. Our phone numbers are also listed on that website if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's move on to uh, other healthcare news. We have a number of recalls that are very serious. <clears throat> You'll probably uh, uh, refer to these on your screen. The Valley Milk Products in Virginia uh, recalled uh, its products, milk products, because of salmonella poisoning. The original creamy soy nut butter uh, was recalled from I Am Healthy, and it was dated August 2018. It has E. coli. And the Ohio Farms Packing Company recalled its veal. I believe the number is 0.34569 due to E. coli. So check if you have uh, any of those products uh, in your house. Recently, there were outbreaks of measles, both in Hudson County, where a man had gone overseas and contracted the disease. Uh, the New Jersey Department of Health said uh, uh, that uh, it was isolated there, but, but another two cases occurred in Passaic County, and that was an infant that was unvaccinated. Uh, I believe it was at uh, one of the local hospitals uh, here in Passaic. Uh, there's a norovirus outbreak. This is a very serious outbreak. Norovirus looks like a flu, horrible vomiting and diarrhea, it dehydrates you. It's the same virus that you see on cruise ships where hundreds of people get sick at a time. It'll wipe out families. So if you've had whole families wiped out, it's probably norovirus. The flu, of course, is horrible. I myself had the vaccine and still had three flus this season. It's uh, very nasty. The vaccine was only uh, less than 50% effective. They've got to find another way. I believe they're working on a universal vaccine to get this right. This is interesting. There was a leptospirosis outbreak in the Bronx. I happen to know about it. My daughter was out there. <clears throat> leptospirosis is a third world disease where you have people contacting the urine from rats and they get extremely painful, rigid muscle cramps, high fevers. It feels like a flu, horrible disease, and probably the first outbreak I've heard of uh, in this country in a long time, and it was right here in the Bronx. Uh, bird flu, very scary, uh, is back in China. and. People have died. It's not widespread. People were contacting these chickens that had this very aggressive, scary bird flu, H7N9. 225 cases and 51 died in last year. And we've had bird flu outbreak in the, uh, um, <clears throat> some of the chicken farms in Tennessee and maybe Alabama, and those chickens have all been culled or killed. Uh, no humans have gotten sick, but just, you know, when that happens, we kill all those chickens. Some countries have refused to take uh, exported chickens from uh, the United States because of the outbreaks of bird flu, so we need to follow that more closely. Uh, syphilis is on the rise, and, um, and we're, I haven't personally seen it in a while, but some of my colleagues have seen it in newborns, so we have to watch that. Washington Post uh, reports a study for the Journal of Pediatric Infectious Disease. Uh, it was a large research trial from 2007 through 15, 100,000 hospital admissions of children, and they said three out of five had resistant infections with gut organisms like the Enterobacteria FCA. And uh, we know resistant uh, germs are becoming much more of a problem. New York Times, uh, this is fascinating. Pigs are now being used to grow new organs for people needing transplants. You actually uh, put your stem cells into them and they grow the organ for you. <laughs> Who would have thought? That's really interesting. Uh, CNN had talked about an increase in colon cancer in younger patients. They don't really know why, maybe diet, maybe higher cholesterol or whatever, but uh, the, the problem is is that who, who uh, that happens to be younger than 50 is going to get a test for colon cancer. So these are being diagnosed late when they're more serious, whereas those of us my age, I'm 62, but anybody in their 50s is going to have a colonoscopy and be tested. So we're all going to know, but who's going to pick it up at a 30 or 40 year old, you know, until it's too late? So that was alarming. Uh, Fox News, uh, this is fascinating. A sickle cell patient was treated with gene therapy. Uh, you know, sickle cell, you have a defective gene making a defective hemoglobin that clots up the blood, causing pain crisis and strokes and things. So they actually injected a new gene and was able to cure the patient. Boy, that's great. We need a lot more of that gene therapy. And 
I'm a little worried about the cuts in funding proposed by uh, the new budget from the White House. Hopefully, uh, some of the money will come in because the NIH, National Institute of Health, and CDC, and all these research places, we need to get more of this sort of stuff going. Uh, the Ledger uh, reports a federal bill that was pending to force employees uh, to do genetic testing uh, looking for potential illnesses. They were doing it. Uh, it did not pass. It's, it's, it's on, in the committee. But if it passes, uh, uh, the people for the American Disabilities Act are all up in arms, and the people for the 2018 Act, which represents Genetics Info Non-Discrimination Act, are, what they're saying is, you know how you get a break on your insurance policies if you're healthy and following a healthy diet, and employees, employers wanted to decrease the cost of insurance. They said, so let me see who has a genetic potential for what disease, and we'll help you work on it. Of course, it can backfire. Again, double-edged sword. So we'll see if that actually passes. Now let's uh, move on to health and safety concerns. Uh, there's been a number of poisonings recited, uh, cited. Washington Post said that a uh, study uh, of environmental sciences and technology letters, uh, that's the name of the journal, uh, talked about fluorinated carcinogens that are found in our fast food packaging, you know, in the sandwich and dessert wrappers or those paperboard containers you see. So who would have thought there's cancer in there? Uh, CNN uh, talked about an article from JAMA, that's the Journal of American Medical Association, the ophthalmology part that talked about chemical burns in the eyes in children from those laundry detergent packets. I guess it's those packets you throw in machines were exploding in their eyes, I guess. Reuters talked about children consuming pet medicine. I honestly have never thought about that. I'm always worried about grandma's medicine being poisoned in children, but who would have thought the pet medicine the kids would get poisoned on, but it makes sense. Uh, recalls. Uh, Ikea had recalled beach chairs M-Y-S-I-N-G-S-O, my sing, my sing so. They said uh, when you took it apart to wash it and put it back together, if it was reassembled incorrectly, it could, uh, it could amputate your fingers. Uh, I think those were recalled. Uh, let's move on. Washington Post says that the CDC says that, this is interesting, 40 million Americans have lost uh, hearing. 40 million Americans have lost hearing, and half of it from outdoor exposure. Stuff we see all the time, leaf blowers, uh, sirens, concerts. And the study they report, this is a well-known study. We all get research from it. It's called the NHANES, National Health Nutrition Examination Survey. <clears throat> has a lot of data. And so um, I hadn't, honestly, before that paid attention. Uh, I know we're always working on lowering the ambient sound. And most towns do have levels. Uh, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, this just came to me. Um, uh, this uh, poor opera star who was singing for her money on the street was actually arrested in a New Jersey town uh, not too long ago for raising the uh, sound barrier, <laughs> just trying to, I, I, th I think she was singing Ave Maria or something very religious on Christmas Eve when she was arrested. But um, let's see, the ledger, uh, this is interesting. Uh, there's been a state-sponsored group, uh, the New Jersey Child Fatality and Near Fatality Review Board <coughs> is handing out cardboard boxes with mattress, a mattress uh, and fitted sheet in it to uh, people that can't afford safe cribs to force the babies to sleep properly so they won't die of crib death where they suffocate. So you put the baby in a box, I guess. Uh, interesting. Uh, CNN said... Uh, Oh, yeah, in terms of uh, preventing mosquito illnesses, this is a very interesting. CNN reported on a whole bunch of things you can buy that actually have the repellents in them, like soaps with repellents or special bamboo chairs that have repellents, window seals, so that it will repel the mosquitoes without you having to, to do anything. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, some interesting updates on diets. Uh, ap uh, we're going to put up on the screen some of this stuff, but... Uh, CNN just reminds us that fish oils are important, eating more salmon and mackerel and sardines. Uh, oils are in walnuts and canola oil, flaxseed oil, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds. Uh, they, talk, they said the Mediterranean diet that we all love is good for kids. Just careful they don't choke on the nut. Washington Post talks about vegetable oils, olive oil, especially virgin olive oil, canola oil, that it's better than butter. 
It's better than margarine and even better than coconut oil. Uh, this came out of a cardiology study. They didn't like coconut oil because of the cholesterol. Uh, careful to eat less yolk, even though um, we said now that we're not worried about eggs and cholesterol. The cardiologist said if you can eat egg whites, do it. You know, just still be careful. Eat more leafy greens, but ask your doctor if you're on blood thinners because the leafy greens can affect the medicine. Uh, eat more fresh fruit, fruit rather than just juicing with concentrated juices. Wall Street Journal, it, they had reported a very interesting thing about making fruits and vegetables more exciting in schools. I thought this was fascinating. <clears throat> Putting them at the front of the line when you walk in, making them look colorful and get a load of this uh, and even doing it in classrooms as snack breaks to eat healthy fruits and vegetables. But I thought this was interesting, giving them funny names like uh, x-ray carrots or turbo tomatoes, uh, stuff like that. And uh, that'll about wrap us up for today. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us, as always, for our monthly news show. We welcome your comments and look forward to uh, seeing you again next month.